We spent a few hours planning out where we wanted to position our EPMP 2000s and what kind of tests we wanted to run to the ground with the subscriber antennas. Now I have to give a big thank you to Cambium Networks for sponsoring the equipment that's being used in this video. Everything that you see today was donated by Cambium Networks to the Community Broadband Project. They also sent out Chris Catania, who is an expert in all things Cambium. So we unboxed all the gear and then configured everything based on the point to multi-point design that we came up with using Cambium's Link Planner tool. We first input all of our access points and subscriber antennas into this tool and then position them where we wanted our coverage. We decided to place one of the EPMP 2000 90 degree sectors pointing out towards the Santa Monica and Venice Beach area. The second sector is pointing more northeast towards the Mar Vista and Century City area. For each access point, we set the range that we wanted to cover, the antenna height, as well as the azimuth. Now, the azimuth is basically what direction the sector is pointing. From there, we could play around with the antenna tilt or any other settings that we wanted to in order to find the best configuration that we could on paper. Now, if you look at our subscriber antennas for this first access point, notice that two of them are black and one is red. That's gonna come into play shortly. But before we take a closer look at all of our point to multi-point links, let's first take a quick look at the equipment that we're gonna use. <laughs> Um, okay, so we've got all the equipment laid out on the table that we're going to use, and um, you know, Josh, how are we going to be using this uh, first and foremost? So we're going to be uh, be pushing a backhaul link to our main tower. We'll we'll be using this as a point to multi point system to to throw a uh, start with the 90 degree sector up and see uh, sort of how clients are connecting to it, what, what kind of speeds we're getting off these, given our you know, noise and interference in the area, and yeah. just kind of see how it works. How do you um, plot out, you know, like where the 90 degrees is going to shoot out over a given area? Uh, that's a good question. So we uh, we usually start with uh, with mapping our, our environments out on our network, looking at subscriber density mm -hmm. and uh, sort of how many subscribers we have in any given area and what kind of RF challenges we're facing in that area. And then from there, we'll, we'll go back to the table and start to look at uh, what kind of equipment we have available to us and how it best fits in those uh, environments. Very cool. And so today we're going to be using uh, Cambium EPMP 2000 stack with some subscriber antennas. Uh, what are we looking at here, Chris? So specifically hardware-wise, what we have here is our EPMP 2000 with our with a dynamic RF filter. We have a 90 or 120 degree sector antenna. Now explain that because I I covered that in the video that I did on this, but basically your full bandwidth to 90 degrees and you can kind of go a little bit further to 120 but you're not necessarily going to get full performance? Correct. Yeah. So typically with antennas, a 90 degree antenna is actually a 60 degree antenna with 3 dB of roll off. So that is borderline what this, this uh, sector antenna is. When you want to use it for 120 degrees, you have to take into account an additional 3 dB of roll off but you're able to do so. Just be aware your distances with that extra side skirts will be severely limited. Yeah. So if I wanted to, if I had two of these sectors and I wanted to cover a little bit more than 180 degrees, would I be aiming them you know, exactly 90 degrees apart or could I aim them a little further out, have a little bit of overlap in that, uh, that like extra uh, arc? Yeah, you can aim them slightly further apart. It, it, unfortunately with wireless, it's a field of variables, so you really have to be on site and kind of play with it. Um, but just take into account that when you separate them further and you want to use them for a little bit broader coverage, where they will overlap, it, the power level to each individual AP is going to be, uh, it's going to be less. So that's the sector. Uh, and then on the back here, of course, we have the access point. And what's this getting? That is our EPMP 2000. That's our access point with GPS sync and a dynamic RF filter. And we also paired this setup today with our smart beam forming antenna. This is optional, um, but it provides better coverage, uh, not better coverage, better interference mitigation. Yeah, and this is the one that I explained uh, in my Cambium video. I'll put a link to that somewhere. Uh, but basically, this is an array of additional uh, antennas inside here. Tell me if I'm saying anything incorrectly. Uh, that when a client connects to the sector antenna, it then passes the signal. It basically triangulates their horizontal and vertical, and then passes them to the smart antenna for a more targeted beam to a specific, you know, subscriber antenna, right? Correct. So, so I this... can be a Cambium sales engineer. Absolutely. You want a job? <laughs> uh, the smart antenna is an array of uh, something along 
line with 45 different antenna patterns. And essentially what happens is if the AP determines that you'll have a better connection going through a more direct beam, it will use this, the uplink for the smart antenna, but if you need the higher gain for a better connection, it'll use this, the usual sector. AP determines this automatically on its own. There's no user intervention here. And if you go into the actual settings on the AP under monitor wireless, it tells you on a per subscriber basis whether that subscriber is using the smart antenna or the sector. Now from a uh, sort of like cost upgrade standpoint, mm -hmm. is this a system where we can start with a sector and then over time upgrade specific sectors with this, uh, with this antenna? So I, I frequently guide operators to always have at least one smart antenna on the shelf. Uh, it shines with high interference in that same sector. So when it steers a beam, you know, let's just say to the left of the sector, if there's some intermittent noise on the right-hand side of the sector, you're providing additional isolation. Interference always hurts the client-side communication the worst. So to be able to focus a beam, create additional isolation from that interference, boost your uh, SNR, and also increase your modulation rate.